Good evening, I'm Russell Michael and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. We start our program today with the drama that unfolded at the Malacca State Assembly this morning. It had everything from vulgarities to a flying book. This was the scene at the Malacca State Assembly this morning, just barely half an hour into the one-day sitting. Today's sitting is the first under the new Parikatan National-led Malacca government after Harapan fell in the state on March 2nd when two of its assembly persons defected to join Parikatan National. Speaker Omar Jaffa, who is aligned to Harapan, ordered for the sitting to be postponed after a shouting match erupted between Idris Harun and several Pakatan Harapan assembly persons. It started when Idris told Omar that he was not fit to carry out the duty of Speaker of the Assembly as he no longer commanded the support of the majority. The House descended into pandemonium as PN representatives protested against Omar's decision to reject a motion to remove him as the House Speaker. Omar eventually adjourned the sitting. Bukit Katil Assembly person Adli Zahari gave a glimpse of the chaos. Siapa yang baling buku? Yang bawa mak sungai udang. Baling kepada Speaker? Dia baling ke arah Speaker. Hmm. Barely an hour after the sitting was adjourned by Speaker Omar Jaffa, Perikatan National Representatives reconvened the State Assembly sitting with Amnos Ghazali Muhammad as the acting speaker to initiate the voting process for a new speaker. And with the absence of opposition assembly persons, Amno Liaison Chief Abdul Rauf Yusof was voted in as the new speaker. Uh, perlu ada usul untuk menangguhkan uh, persidangan. Tidak ada usul untuk menangguh persidangan dan pada kira itu bahawa uh, speaker dia terus meninggalkan bermaknanya speaker absent pada ketika ini. Kan itu membolehkan untuk membolehkan. Uh, speaker gantian. Ya. Dan ya. terus kita nanti speaker. Kita akan berlaku isu perlembagaan seperti kita berpandukan atas perlembagaan dan peraturan mesyuarat. Following this, Melaka Pakatan Harapan said the voting of Rauf as the new speaker is not valid. Dr Wong Fort Ping said that as far as they are concerned, Omar Jaffa is still the legitimate speaker of the state house. Wong said the sitting was already adjourned and what PN did was their own rehearsal. He added that as far as the standing orders of the State Legislative Assembly of Melaka is concerned, Omar is still the Speaker. Wong, who is also Deputy Speaker of the State Assembly, said they will now have to wait for the next State Assembly to put things in order. Malaysia continues to report more daily recoveries than new infections. Health Ministry Director General Dr. Norisham Abdullah revealed today that there is no strong scientific evidence that those who have recovered from COVID-19 have developed immunity to protect them from a second infection. This comes after the World Health Organization urged countries to refrain from issuing immunity passports to people who have recovered from COVID-19, which would allow them to be excluded from certain restrictions. However, Dr. Norisham stressed that preventive measures will continue to be Malaysia's way of dealing with the outbreak. Kementerian Kesihatan ingin menasihatkan orang ramai untuk terus mengambil langkah-langkah pencegahan jangkitan COVID-19 serta mempraktikkan kelaziman baru iaitu yang pertama, elakkan keluar daripada rumah kecuali untuk urusan-urusan yang penting sahaja. Yang kedua, mengamalkan jarak sosial selamat sekurang-kurangnya satu meter daripada orang lain. Yang ketiga, mengamalkan tahap kebersihan optima pada setiap masa seperti kerap mencuci tangan dengan menggunakan air dan sabun atau hand sanitizer. Meanwhile, Malaysia reported 88 more recoveries on Monday, bringing the total number of recoveries in the country to 5,113, which is 76% of the total number of infections. Dr. Nur Hisham also revealed that 70 new infections were detected, 31 of those cases involved foreigners. One new death was reported, bringing the death toll to 109. The latest victim was a 63-year-old Malaysian man with pre-existing health conditions. With people free to move around, many parents have been taking their kids out, especially to crowded places like the mall. In light of this, parents have been urged to be more responsible. People should not abuse the relaxed conditions set by the government under the Conditional Movement Control Order. This is the message delivered by Senior Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob to parents who think it's a good idea to bring their kids to malls. Walau mana pun seperti saya katakan bahawa keselamatan anak kita adalah tanggungjawab kita. Kita kena tanya diri kita, adakah anak kita akan selamat jika berada di dalam kumpulan 
manusia yang ramai di dalam kawasan tertutup seperti di dalam pasaraya dan sebagainya. Jadi mereka perlu tanya. Setakat ini tidak ada. Tetapi jika perkara ini berterusan, kerajaan boleh boleh memasukkan di dalam peraturan di bawah Akta 342 untuk menjadikan membawa anak-anak ke tempat kalayak ramai seperti supermarket dan sebagainya sebagai uh, perkara yang terlarang di dalam list negatif yang ada pada ketika ini. Under the conditional MCO, most businesses are allowed to reopen, while recreational activities that do not involve crowds are also allowed. However, mass gatherings are still not allowed to curb the spread of COVID-19. He urged parents to be responsible, failing which he said the government will be forced to amend the regulations to enforce specific curbs related to children. Meanwhile, Isma Sabri said the new COVID-19 cases discovered last week were not due to non-compliance by businesses for the SOPs under the conditional MCO. On the contrary, he said the new infections were discovered as a result of employers complying with the SOP, pointing to the new cluster detected at a Satya Alam construction site as an example. The Satya Alam construction site cluster was first reported on May 9th with 12 positive cases, all of whom are migrants. Another cluster in a plant in Pedas, Negeri Sembilan, was also not due to non-compliance of the SOP, Isma stressed. Immigration raids against undocumented migrants in Malaysia continues. Today, hundreds were detained in Selayang. Authorities have conducted a fresh round of raids against undocumented migrants in Selayang. The operation took place in the enhanced movement control order areas around the Kuala Lumpur wholesale market. The move comes as the enhanced MCO is expected to be lifted in two days. Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Mazlan Lazim confirmed the operation took place early this morning and was led by the Immigration Department and assisted by the police and a number of other agencies. According to the China Press, the operation which began at 6am saw hundreds of undocumented migrants detained up to 10am. A helicopter was also used during the operation, its report added. Previously, the authorities had also conducted raids against undocumented migrants in previous enhanced MCO areas. Defence Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob, who is also the senior minister overseeing the MCO, had previously defended the raids. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mathur Mohamad has responded to accusations that he had supported Bursatu's plan to quit Harapan. Bursatu chairperson elect Dr. Mathur Mohamad said he saw no reason for Bursatu to quit Pakatan Harapan as the coalition had given him full support. This was after Bursatu Information Chief Radzi Jidin accused Mahathir of supporting the party's exit from Harapan before having a last-minute change of heart. In a video message today, Mahathir said he did not see the need to leave Harapan following a meeting on February 21st, where the coalition ultimately left it to him to set a date for when he would resign as Prime Minister. Saya berpendapat bahawa cadangan supaya Parti Bersatu ini keluar daripada Pakatan Harapan Tidak ada asas yang baik. Saya disokong sepenuhnya oleh Pakatan Harapan. The meeting on February 21st had been an intense session according to sources that spoke to Malaysia Kini then. Mahathir was being pressured to set a date to step down and make way for PKR leader Anwar Ibrahim and Bersatu had responded with a threat to quit the coalition. Muhyiddin, who would ultimately make good on that threat just three days later, was said to have played a diplomatic role, stating that Mahathir and Anwar should sort the transition issue themselves. Mahathir said today that despite getting Harapan ultimately giving him their full support, Muhyiddin felt there was an urgent need for Bersatu to leave the coalition. Mahathir said Muhyiddin felt that if Bersatu did not leave, the Malays would be destroyed by DAP. However, the former Prime Minister added he was not convinced that DAP could so easily destroy the Malays. Coming up next, Monday marks a new beginning for France as many activities will resume, including the ability to get a haircut. Many of us in Malaysia, including me, are in a desperate need for a haircut, but unfortunately we just can't do it yet. But the people in France will finally be able to get one starting today. Millions of French people are set to cautiously emerge from one of Europe's strictest lockdowns on Monday, once more able to engage in everyday activities that have become unexpectedly precious, such as visiting shops and getting their hair cut. France's official death toll is the world's fifth highest, had enforced an eight-week lockdown since March 17 to slow the spread of the new coronavirus, with residents only allowed to go out for essential shopping, work and a bit of exercise. 
Shops and hair salons can now reopen, while people can venture out without a government-mandated form, except for trips more than 100 kilometers, which are only allowed for professional reasons, funerals and caring for the sick. President Emmanuel Macron's government decided to lift the lockdown after the number of patients in intensive care, a key measure for hospitals' ability to cope with the virus, fell to less than half the peak of over 7,000 since early April. Another encouraging indicator has been a prolonged decline in the number of daily deaths from the coronavirus infections, which fell to 70 on Sunday, bringing the total to 26,380. Ahead of Monday's end to the lockdown, many people were keen to enjoy life's simple pleasures again, including getting a new hairstyle. But it's certainly not business as usual. The government has urged caution with some regions, including the Paris area, remaining red zones and subject to additional restrictions. People across the nation are also advised to still work from home if they are able to do so. A few sporadic clusters of infections have emerged in recent days. As most states in the U.S. reopen, the predicted death toll is also on the rise. Here's more on that. The University of Washington's Institute for Healthcare Metrics and Evaluation made a chilling revision to their mortality prediction, now claiming that almost 135,000 Americans will die from COVID-19 by early August, almost double that of previous projections. And then the other thing that we're, we're seeing in some states is, uh, which is why we like to, to revise the forecast, on a very regular basis, is that we're just seeing more cases and deaths than expected in certain places. Um, but it's mostly mobility that's driving up the numbers. Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota and Georgia, where mobility has increased since the easing of the lockdown measures, were cited by the Institute as states that will likely soon see a rise in new infections. The Institute's predictive coronavirus model, periodically revised to account for changing circumstances and scientific insights surrounding the pandemic, has become an influential data point, often cited by the White House and public health authorities engaging the crisis. The Institute's projections are presented as a statistical range of outcomes. The latest forecast predicts that cumulative number of U.S. deaths from COVID-19 will run from as few as 95,000 to as many as 242,000 by August 4th with 134 lives lost representing the most likely middle ground. By comparison, the previous revision issued on April 29th put the middle case figure at 72,000 deaths. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Brasal Michael. Thank you for watching.